Hey guys, my name is Ali and I am a data and analytics consultant. Let's talk about something we've all seen and experienced, Power BI dashboards that look great, but doesn't get used enough by management. In this video, I want to walk you as to what separates dashboards that management use from the ones that they don't use and how you can build data products that are strategically anchored, action oriented and used in decision making. How to build Power BI dashboards that executives, um, management leadership will decide to use. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is why does executive dashboards often fail? Um, and what I've seen is that many times you have too much data and not enough insights. So you're focusing on showing a lot of data, but not a lot of it actually is insight that they need to be able to make a decision or, or follow up on a KPI or, or some sort of strategic goal. Um, second point, lack of strategic relevance. You might not have the right KPIs for the right strategic goals to, to show to the management the way they want to have it presented. So, so it's important to know what does the dashboard show, what are the KPIs, and why are they strategically important. Um, poor design and slow performance. Sometimes it's just too much going on and the report isn't working fast enough. So poor design can mean many different things. It can be navigation, it can be how things are shown. Um, colors, layout, we're going to come back to some parts uh, in the presentation. And also low performance or slow performance is just that it, it just runs slowly. So you need to optimize either the DAX or the data model or something else if you have the dashboard in a different software. So that it becomes nice and snappy and it's, it's responsive. Um, no ownership or integration in routines. And what I mean by that is that um, there isn't anyone on the in the C-level or uh, suite or another management level who owns the dashboard or the KPIs in the dashboard. And it, it's not really, when I say integration in routines, it's not really part of a routine or a specific um, context where, where this dashboard is created for that so that they can use it to find the insight they need to make decisions in that meeting or, or whatever that routine is. It can be different things. Um, so some reason why dashboards uh, often fail, uh, especially on the management and, and executive level. Um, we then look at what the successful dashboards have in common. Uh, number one, tie to clear strategic goals and KPIs. Um, it's easy to see based on a dashboard what is the support. You know what the KPIs are, why they have been selected, and which goal that's goal uh, on, on the strategic side that they, they support. Simple, it's focused and visually clean. Easy to navigate, it's focused in on the most important KPIs, and, and it's just visually appealing to, to look at and, and work in. Um, it highlights trends, outliers, and next steps. How are things evolving? Is something uh, outside of what we expect? And, and what do we learn from this so that we can make some decisions for, for the future and what we want to do, want to do next? Um, used in meetings and decision making, very important the, the dashboard has a specific use case in meetings or other contexts and, and there where the decisions have been, are being taken, that, that's where the dashboard is, is part of that. It's trusted, it's up to date and it's easy to access. So they trust the data, it updates at the fre frequency that they expect and it's easy to get to the report. Either if they get it through an email or, or they go in into the service themselves, doesn't matter, it's easy to access. Um, all some criteria which, which successful dashboards have in common. If we think uh, about some different uh, points and we want to drill into that, then one is that the strategic anchoring is very important. And what I mean by that is that when you start to, start to shape the dashboard and create it, maybe you want to take a look at the company's OKRs, um, objectives and key results, or the goals that the leadership have set, set for themselves or, or the company for this quarter or, or, or the entire year. Um, that should give you an idea of how, you know, what the dashboard should support and what are some of the strategic goals and some sort of direction are already there. Then you want to show some of these goals that they're trying to achieve um, numerically. And then you want to show the actuals, how they are performing against, against those goals and have some traffic light indicators. Is it green? Is it yellow? Is it red? Is it trending up or down? Um, make sure that you, you support these strategic, uh, strategic goals by showing how we are doing against the strategic goals. Um, uh, try to showcase how things have uh, progressed over time. And has there been periods where there were risk or are there periods where there will be risk or are there any KPIs which is indicating risk right now? Um, and that's again to, to show where were we, where are we, you know, what was going good or bad, what, what might go good or bad in the future and what right now is good or bad. 
um, it comes back to the strategic point of view on it to understand and, and get some, some direction. Align KPIs with ownership and accountability. And what I mean by that is that the KPIs that you showcase, um, someone should own those KPIs. You should know who owns the financial KPIs, who owns the operational KPIs, who owns the uh, sales KPIs. It should be tied to a role or a level or a department or, or something so that you get a certain level of accountability. And what I mean by that is that if they discuss this cape, if they discuss this dashboard or they use it in a specific context, someone should be asked about a KPI if it is showing red or green for that matter. Someone owns it, someone has an accountability to, to be able to explain how it is progressing. Um, so some important points in terms of strategic anchoring, and I think this is very important to make sure that the dashboard stays relevant and used on, on managerial levels in a company. Common, uh, common mistakes or pitfalls, data overload, uh, less is definitely more on management level and executive level. Uh, metrics that shouldn't be there or, or metrics that you don't really understand why they are there. Don't just add all the metrics, you should know why they are there and, and what purpose they serve design which is not good weak design or confusing visuals you don't want the most you know you don't want the coolest visuals you want plain simple to understand easy to navigate make, make sure that that's both on the design and and your selection of, of visuals action orientation orientation has to be there you see the kpi and then it leads to some sort of action which which someone has to do some sort of decision some sort of change there's different ways of doing the action orientation part when you get to a very advanced level you can predict and you can recommend but at some point it's just good to indicate up or down and it should lead to some sort of action and and it should be shaped so that you you, you do so that people have to take an action that that they understand oh i need to do something here um so so that's something that people forget to to, to leverage and think about last one poor data quality and lack of trust very classic, make sure that the data quality is up to date as expected, they trust it and update it with the frequency that they also, also expect. Um, so here are some mistakes, write them down, think about it, compare it to what you're doing, compare it to what you've delivered before and see what you can learn from this. Couple design principles that I think work uh, very well. Make sure that you give the, uh, the most imp important KPIs, you prioritize that those and you give them uh, more uh, canvas space than, than maybe other KPIs that aren't that important. Use colors and layout to guide attention. Um, don't just select colors just to select colors. Don't go with the company colors just because it's that company. Make sure you use colors with a purpose and use a layout with a purpose to guide the users in terms of what they need to look at and focus on so that you can showcase what is important to notice. Show statuses against targets. I mentioned that before, but how are we doing? What is the target? Are we going, you know, doing well or, or not so well against that um, target? Try to give some detail, but maybe try to use drill through or, or try not to have some more de detail up front. Instead, uh, enable different capabilities to find the details, but on the main overview executive management dashboards, keep it simple. Optimize performance. Uh, because a, a faster report, a snappier report, a, a faster responsiveness is just a, a nicer report and a tool to, to work in. So, so make sure it, it, it has a, a specific response so that it's, 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 it's a pleasant tool. Very important. I've been in cases where things takes too fast, not too long to load and adoption drops. People don't want to use it. They, they need the information when they need it and preferably um, before they um, ask for it. Couple of Power BI features that I want to uh, showcase and focus in on. Smart narratives, which is AI generated summaries. Now that generative AI is becoming so popular, you can even use services outside of Power BI. You don't need to use the smart narratives function um, where you, you generate some smart narratives and, and you push it back into the data warehouse and then you showcase it in Power BI. This could give you more um, control, which could be good, but, but AI generated summaries could be something that increases usability as, as it helps summarize some of the information that you otherwise would need to navigate and find. Tooltips, definitions and guidance on, on your mouse hovering over a KPI or another element. It could be that it shows a definition, 
what the KPI says, or you can even be graphs that explains more about the KPI and how that KPI has been, been going. Um, drill through optional deep dives uh, from one KPI to more detail on a different page. It's a nice Power BI feature for that. Bookmarks, if you want to have different views, buttons, filters, gives you some flexibility in terms of what you want to show based on selections and, and what the user can decide. Apps, team tabs, and email subscriptions are different functions to, to showcase and share reports. Apps in terms of Power BI service, team tabs in terms of uh, embedding Power BI reports in Teams, email subscriptions in terms of pushing um, reports to the users with maybe a screenshot of an, of an executive dashboard. A couple different use, uh, different ways of, of sharing the reports that, could, uh, that can boost usability. Another point which I think is important is to make sure that the report becomes part of a workflow and, and to build some ownership. And what I mean by that is try to get the dashboards to where management and leaders work. If that is in Teams and they have a team tab in a, in a recurring meeting, then they can find the report there. It could be emailed that they get an email uh, weekly when the report is updated with a screenshot of it. It can be different things, but try to get it as close to the management and, and leadership as possible. Uh, see if you can automate delivery um, as good as, po as possible. Don't just trust that they will remember it. Try and get it out to them uh, and, and you will see that um, uh, it's easier for them to then use it in their workflow and, and for them to also get a bit of ownership because it's, it's closer to them. Assign KPI owners with clear accountability and that means that the different KPIs that you choose, it should be clear who owns it and, and who needs to, to answer to how it is performing on the good side or, or a bad side. This comes back to ownership and also which KPIs you, you decide to showcase and why those are the ones you showcase. Promote and train because adoption is not automatic and this is super important and that is that you need to promote the changes, you need to promote the reports and you need to make sure that you train, train, train. You have to offer training, uh, training online when people join the company. Um, in person, it can be different ways of doing it, but it's very important that you both promote the, the data products and you also do training on them because adoption doesn't happen by itself. A couple final thoughts. Um, dashboard is only useful if it is being used, clearly. Um, try to combine strategic point of view, why you're designing, how you're designing, and have some empathy with the user. Don't make it too hard, don't make it too complicated, keep it simple. Help them get their hands on the, uh, on the report and you will see that adoption will increase and, and your Power BI reports will be used more. Then follow up, adapt your reports and also improve continuously. That's also important is to get the reports and, and, and uh, the platform and the data function that you have in a company into a, a place where they, they can continuously get some feedback, adapt and improve, and it becomes sort of like an iterative dialogue with the, with the business who is using the data products um, instead, of, instead of these big bang releases that happens every few months. Um, so a couple final thoughts on, on dashboards. Again, try and try and look through, think about what you've been doing before, what you're doing now, uh, what can you do better to make sure that both executives and other management in the company actually use your Power BI reports. And, and you'll see an increased adoption and, and enthusiasm around both data products and, and data project, projects in general in your company. Thank you guys for watching. I've written a full article on what makes a dashboard management ready from strategic alignment to Power BI design tips. You'll find the link to the description in that below. If you need help reviewing your current reporting setup, aligning dashboard with strategic goals, or driving executive adoption, then reach out either on LinkedIn or mail, and I'm more than happy to discuss that with you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.